and welcome back. Now, you may remember some time ago, I actually had a PCB made by PCBUA, the sponsors of my video, those people at the back there, and uh, this was the result. <laughs> Um, it was pretty dire. I used Eagle. I've never used Eagle before in my life, so it was a it was a an educational experience for me, believe me. Um, and it was pretty ropey. There was even a couple of mistakes on here. But at the end of the day, we did see the thing actually working. And I'm hoping this still works. Let's have a look. Oh, here we go. There we are. Look. PCB way. PCB prototyping the easy way. New members get their first order absolutely free. Check out their online site now. Now, that opened up my eyes to a whole world of possibilities. So, if I thought, well, if I can get this working, then I can probably get other things working as well, with a bit of learning. And you guys uh, came up trumps. You said, well, look, forget Eagle. That's really overly complicated. Why don't you try one of the other alternatives? Um, the two that you came up with mainly were Easy EDA, which is like a web-based, uh, browser-based um, design well, CAD system, and then there was KiCAD. Some people call it KiCAD, K-I-CAD, but it's pronounced KiCAD apparently. Um, and so I thought, right, I'm going to have a go with both of those. So I started with Easy EDA first, and that's in fact what this board is created with. Uh, this was the result of my ultrasonic one, as you can see. First of all, it, it looks a bit better, but then it's a little bit smoke and mirrors because I've added all these sort of, what do you call it, prototyping points on here right sometimes with some ground and positive rails and whatnot but the actual circuit is just this bit in the middle the thing that took me the most time with this particular pcb was getting the size right because as you can see it's a, it's a shield isn't it for an arduino right and there it is sitting at the back all nicely made and uh, the best thing for me to be quite honest the thing i was most worried about is making sure that the spacing between these pins were right now i did use if you like a template for that shield although it wasn't it wasn't the best template in the world there wasn't a lot of information on it but anyway i found one used it and then created my own shield from it so as you can see i've got the, the typical double row of pins here so you can have headers and pins if you like i thought that'd be a good thing to do for the future not for this particular project but uh, yeah just learning from it that's why i also did these prototyping areas as well i thought well I'd like to know how to do that. How do I make the holes? How do I connect them? And how do I create those little white lines? If you can see like the ground here, they've got like these little connecting lines across. I've seen that before and uh, I wanted to do that as well. So I've learned all that now. Uh, would I change this design? Yes, I would with a few more things I've learned, but that's neither here nor there now. This is a, a pretty good layout. It works. Um, there were no errors. <laughs> Yeah, I know, I was surprised as well. Um, and it's 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 okay. I mean, this has been working now inside with Dougal, my dog, for the best part of our name. It must be two, three weeks, perhaps. And it, it's working good. There's a, a little problem with it, though. This is what I mean. Like, if I if I were to do it again, I'd, I'd certainly think about the construction a little bit more. Um, as you can see, I'm just about to start mounting it on these acrylic panels. Now, these acrylic panels are, in fact, transparent. And you will have seen them before in my coffee cup holder. That's the video on screen now, um, which I'm still using incidentally. It's at the back of my workshop over in that direction. Um, anyway, these are transparent, or no, they're not tra totally transparent. They're smoky grey. So behind this protective, here we are, I can get the corner off, you can see they're smoky grey and very nice they look too. So what I intend to do initially is just to mount the Arduino on this board. So here's a typical Arduino. Uh, let's get the mounting right. So that's going to go on there. Okay, I've just marked out a couple of holes, at which point I stopped. I thought, oh, I should be videoing this. Um, then what I'm going to do is put another one on top of that. Well, once that shield goes on top of there, so let's do it right, that goes on there. This one will then go on top of there, held apart by some spacers. And on top of this is going to be the ultrasonic uh, module. So this one here will then just sit on top of that because that's it's big and chunky. And I'm thinking at the back of my mind, can I not replicate this myself and make it about a quarter of the size? Because we know that inside here, all it is is a 555 timer and some kind of 
power transistor to drive this this pizza loudspeaker or well high frequency loudspeaker anyway so i'm thinking maybe in due course i might in fact get rid of this if i can get the performance correct anyway that's that's for another day so that's going to that's going to sit on top of there but as you can see there's a problem an immediate problem um, forget the LEDs because they they're just pushed in at the moment so they come out nicely but to get this top one on well the first thing that's too high of course is the microphone thing that plugs in so that's not a problem that's why I did it like this so I can run wires from here if need be to here okay so I can either put this somewhere else on on this base or arrange this differently so that it it sits down here perhaps somewhere like that um, and the second thing that's too high of course is the MOSFET and there's not a lot I can do with this particular design because I've got the output to the ultrasonic device so, so this device plugs into here and so I can't push that flat that's not a problem though because I've got different loads of these boards I've got 10 of them in total what I'm going to do is build this again and this time put this this MOSFET underneath the board now, if I put it underneath the board, this flat plate, the drain on here, will not be up against the board. And funnily enough, I don't want it to be up against the board because you've got the soldering aspects of all this underneath. So that's going to be flipped underneath, and that will keep this nice and flat then, which means this, this top piece can literally sit right on top of that pretty much. All right, just a little tiny gap, perhaps. And the LEDs will be shortened, because so they're just pushed into these headers here. They'll be shortened and they'll shine through because it's semi-transparent you don't really need the leds from day-to-day -day running but it's it's a nice thing to have isn't it so that's where i'm at at the moment rebuilding this i'll keep this one though because i'm going to put this into a project enclosure and boy they're expensive aren't they even from the far east project boxes or whatever they they are a lot of money given that it's just a bit of plastic i didn't realize they were quite so expensive i thought it might be useful to show you the program I use to actually create this board because um, regardless of where you eventually get your board manufactured and obviously as I say mine was from PCB way because they were cheap and quick and, was, um, and they sponsored my video so um, how did I create this and what have I learnt whilst doing this that um, I got wrong on that first one what what did I do so wrong on here compared to what did I do better on here Let's have a look at that now. So the first thing I did was go to Easy EDA, which is just a website, created an account, which is free. And um, well, then I said, well, I want to create a new project, which is that one there at the top. Create a new project. Here it is, Ultrasonic Bark Deterrent. It goes, OK. So let's just open this up in the editor, and you'll see what I've done. So here this, here's the schematic which you can just about say, let me just center that a little bit. What I like about Easy EDA, one of the things, it's so good, you can just right click, and as you can see, the, the pointer goes to a, a fist, and then you can just drag it around, like some PDFs do. Anyway, so that's my schematic. As you can see, it's simplicity itself, and it hasn't changed an awful lot since you saw it um, in the previous video when I did it. So basically, we have the input here for the microphone, the little tiny microphone unit which um, I did mention in the last one here it is got it this thing here right so that just plugs in and that was deliberately designed that way so I could plug it in or run wires to it so that comes in via this DC blocking capacitor then we have a shot key diode and this capacitor these two together plus that resistor form a um, peak detector effectively let me zoom in on this. There we are. Just mouse wheel it in. So basically, the these three components here perform a peak detector. So what happens in the noise comes in, it gets rectified by the diode, charges up the capacitor, which slowly bleeds off by this. But you get this pulse that then slowly goes back down. You saw this in the previous video. Uh, the other part of this circuit. It looks like it's part of this, but it's not. All this is is VCC going through a 1K resistor and this one microphone. In fact, it could be a 10, actually. I'll go through it now, but it doesn't matter. It just smooths out the noise and the rubbish on the VCC line into the microphone 
amplifier because it's obviously sensitive to noise and that's that's all that bit is and on the output output we have okay a couple of leds via a resistor not very difficult is it and the one well, another one there as well and then the mosfet here driven through a 120 just to be safe i don't think you should really connect an output pin from an arduino directly to the gate uh, of a mosfet you know if something went wrong you could be pumping 20 to 40 milliamps through here or more and burn everything out so i always put a, a, a resistor in there just to um, stop that happening and then a little two pin socket here for the ultrasonic module fine so that's that is it now so what lesson did i learn first of all while doing this well first thing get this schematic 100 percent nailed down if you make changes to this what's that doing there what, what is that l what is that l1 component doing there i think i must have clicked on something um well i don't want it anyway so if i click the component and then delete oh it's gone right um yes get this absolutely nailed down so what you should be doing is designing this building on a breadboard making sure that everything works get your code right in the actual arduino itself um and then only when you think right that's absolutely nailed down do you then go to the next stage of actually creating a pcb because you making changes later is well it's, it's almost impossible for example um, on here i've chosen a one microfarad capacitor now a one microfarad capacitor footprint is probably about what four or five millimeters wide and that's the holes that are going to be drilled in the pcb for this now if you suddenly think oh i've made that wrong it should have been 100 and the 100 is now 10 millimeters wide you're just never going to get that to fit it's going to be a shambles so you've really got to get this locked down tight okay lecture out of the way let's have a look at the actual pcb what do you do well when you create this you can then say right i now want to um, create my pcb i'm not going to go into detail this we'll do that another time actually how to use easy eda but if we look up here at the arduino r3 shield here we are let's just move a couple of things out of the way oh i didn't mean to do that right just move it out of the way right so this this outline the purple outline that's sort of flashing on and off as i scroll over it that's the bit that took me the most time to get that right and i first of all tried to do it myself then i thought then i read on google nope use a template so i found one and i've modified it extensively just just the outline plus these pins up here and i've added in all these numbers you can see let me zoom in on that you can see the numbers i've added those in i added this second row um what else did i do i think that was about it i didn't add oh yes i added the measurements in and checked it and that was it these mounting hole well they're not mounting holes they don't get drilled they're just indicators of where they would be they were on there and i left them there so everything else i had to place myself and it was a little bit of experimentation and you know once, once you got the main thing on now what they say is if you were to give a circuit diagram this one to a hundred engineers pcb designers you know amateur professional whatever you'd get back 100 different boards different pcb layouts because whilst there might be some best practices in creating a pcb there's not necessarily a right way to do it there's probably plenty of way wrong ways to do it yeah but there's there's right ways well there's six of one half a dozen of the other what they do say is as you create your pcb lay it out pretty much like the circuit so if you can see this input bit here uh, these four components when i laid that out on here well starting with the header you got one two three four pretty much as it is on the circuit diagram because they need to be physically close you don't want to put you know the c2 way over here somewhere when it has to be connected up to here so keep the components that logically need to be created together physically together on the pcb as well um yeah and all these footprints the size of these components are in a library and you have to pick the right one it's no good choosing the footprint for an eighth watt resistor if you're going to put a one watt resistor in there it's not going to fit 
it will be it look really ugly when you're trying to do it so you got to take time in doing this this isn't a five minute operation it took me to learn easy eda as far as i got with this one it probably took me two solid days of playing about making mistakes and deleting stuff and learning along the way but two days solid yeah probably five hours per day because i wanted to get you know some some good solid practices behind me and that was that included some googling time uh, i watched a couple of videos i think if the, and if i watch any videos i'll uh, bookmark them and i'll put them at the bottom of this video for you as well okay so that's as far as i've got at the moment this this then i produced my gerber files which is as simple as clicking one of these up here i can't remember which one it is now don't know no, well, whatever it is, I'll tell you. Now, the, one of the good things we just went over it actually. One of the good things is the three D view. When you've when you've created this PCB like we have here on screen, it's so nice about to click three D view, and lo and behold, I hope this comes up on the uh, the video. It's going through every single layer. Thinking about it, and is there going to be some magic? Yes, there we are. There's the board in 3D. Now that means I can click, left click my mouse and move it about um, in real time. So look, 3D like that. And you can, but as you can see, you can zoom in on this just the same look. And you can, so basically that, that board should look like the one that ends up. And if we, if we look at that, and if I flip over very quickly to this one, you'll see that they are not dissimilar are they in fact they're exactly the same so that gives you confidence that what you've got is on screen is what you're going to get through the post okay right that's as far as i got i just want to wanted to bring you up to date on that i'm going to build as i say a version on here the same version of that but put that mosfet underneath and uh, cut down the leds or perhaps maybe move them about i don't know yet just so i've got something on here and uh, then we'll talk about uh, keycad and see how far I got along with that. Right, so this is the KeyCAD initial screen. This is what's known as the e-schema. E um, it's just the control panel basically for KeyCAD. Now, as you can see on the screen, I've already got some items uh, created. So I've got the PCB, the net, the schema and so forth, because obviously I've done the project. What you do initially is uh, create the schema by clicking on that button there. Um, then you click the next one that's a symbol library editor you probably won't need to do that initially not not just to get scar started that's basically to create some more footprints and create your own um, emblems on screen uh, that one which is the pcb layout editor you must definitely will be doing that eventually when you've got that schema layout uh, really tied down and uh yes what else the um there's a Gerber viewer as well, actually, that one there, but let's, let's not jump ahead. Right, so we click this one here and create a circuit diagram, basically, a schema, which um, I've already done. So let's uh, whiz over to that. There it is. Now, it looks similar to, but not identical to the previous one that I did in Easy EDA, because the layout of this, this board um, is a little bit different, isn't it? It's not physical layout. This is logical layout. Because this shield, this Arduino Uno shield, was actually present in the KiCad um, library. So I just grabbed it, put it in, and there it was, ready for me. But it's, as you see, it's laid out in logical order, not serial order. So, in fact, the pins are different, which is why some components are now in different places. That aside, um, it was pretty straightforward to do. There's a couple of anomalies that I just can't get my head around really. And I guess the more experienced guys out there, you've been using this for some while. Perhaps you can uh, give me some pointers. Let's just whiz through it. Okay, so the input is pretty much the same here. Okay, that's that's no different. Um, in fact, I've got I've just noticed actually I've got some of the values wrong on here. It says 10 microfarads there. You, you wouldn't want that. The uh, peak detector would be on for too long. But um, I never actually made a board out of this this schema or PCB. Having got to a certain point, I thought, well, it's proven the point, so the values aren't that important. Um, I don't know, why did it suddenly do that? What did I press? Oh, yeah, all right. So zooming on here is just with the mouse wheel. The um, you can't drag this though. If I right click this, it, it, it's not right. I get a little pop up, but it's not right. What you need to do is um, do an F4. Place your cursor where you want the center of your image to be and then press f4 like that so if i wanted to move over here and get this central one i'll go over there like that and you can zoom in and out as you would normally this f4 bit i must admit did my head in a little bit because you can't 
get it just right well at least after using easy easy EDA with the right click and that little fist that you can just drag things about this seems a little bit harder now apart from that though it was pretty much the same with the wiring and all that and the components the one anomaly that it just would not let go of and even now it's giving me some errors um, you see on the screen here I've got things like power flag here set up and here and I've had to put a power flag marker there and a ground there and a ground here when I've done the the electrical connection check um, by clicking the little ladybird up there so you click that uh, I'm gonna have to switch over to monitor view because you're not getting all the pop-ups now which is a bit of a shame right let me switch over to monitor view and I'll be right back right I've switched over to the monitor view you now you're actually seeing the whole monitor which um, is not quite as good but uh, I'll have to do so as I said you click on the little ladybird to do the electrical connections check um, we can delete all existing markers that's a little error flags one of which you can see down there that's a little error flag saying oi what's going on here so we'll delete those first and then we'll run this ERC as it's called electrical rules checker and we get the same errors back and for the life of me I can't clear these I'm sure at one stage I did have them cleared but basically it says the pins not connected and no connect symbol found on this pin so maybe there's something I just I just need to add to this power flag if I didn't have this power flag here and I didn't have um, let's have a look if I didn't have the little power thing on here it started giving me errors on this because what it's saying is look you got a wire coming out of here going to nowhere what do you expect me to do with that and I'm thinking well I'm not really expecting you to do anything with it it's just leave it be but it, it won't leave it be it will, it will moan uh, yeah it's just trying to get this centered and where I want to look at it is just that little bit more difficult with KiCad so there's the centering there's this funny power flag and ground flag and all these errors it doesn't seem to make any difference to the PCB that still works fine but we'll come on to that in just a sec the components are identical oh by the way I never said on the other circuit diagram and this one the um, the resistor going into the white LED is in fact 1k not the usual 180 or whatever because that white LED is really bright I think they're, they're the old style LEDs that they used to put in torches really white, bright ones so um, I'll put a 1k in there otherwise it's ridiculously bright um, apart from that though everything is pretty much the same here so when you then want to create your PCB the first thing you have to do is export your net what's a net in this applies to both um, both uh, bits of software here a net is any electrical connection between one component and another or between one component and several others so if we look over here let me center it here so this bit of wire coming out of a0 this wire I'm going down now up there and along here to there well, uh, I think it stops there actually that bit there that is one net one wire connection and then there's another one between say the back end of that Zener and the capacitor and then there's go away and there's another one between the capacitor, capacitor and pin 3 these are all individual nets and basically you, you click on the net symbol there generate net list um, I'm not actually gonna do it right now because I might destroy what we've done it will overwrite something but basically it just generates a file now you saw that when we looked at the uh, previous window so in here Oh, it's a bit small now isn't it let me make it a bit bigger so here you can just about see peak detector Arduino shield net that is the file that I created and um, it's just just a text file really you don't have to do anything with it and indeed you shouldn't edit it because it's what's been generated out of your schema okay or circuit diagram but if we have a look at the PCB then um, that is also pretty much the way um, easy EDA did it basically you get a, a bunch of components you have to then straighten them all out and connect them up and uh, yeah that it was similar but not quite the same as let me just expand this board and oh, and zoom in there we are right so there we have the once again the shield of the Arduino v3 outlined there it is that one there um, these pins were already in place the outer set of pins I didn't create a second set because um, I think I had problems doing it it just got too long-winded so I gave up simple as that I know try and try again then give up no point in being a fool about it WC field said that um, the LEDs they have standard fitment and the other components were pretty much the same 
I didn't find this, I have to admit, as intuitive as easy EDA. I felt like I was pushing a boulder up a hill a lot of the time. Things I wanted to do, it goes, no, no. And then some esoteric message comes out. I think, what is it you're actually trying to tell me here? Where's the explanation of that error message? And there wasn't one. There's help, but it's not quite the same. You end up Googling a lot of stuff. And then, of course, as you know, you have to sift through the flotsam and jetsam of the Google results to finally get something that's meaningful. So this is slightly different layout, as you can see. It's not quite as nice, but I must admit, I was getting a bit fed up by this time. But I think I've pretty much got it the same-ish, you know, in terms of electrical connections anyway. And once again, it does have a 3D viewer, which is always good to do. Even partway through your board creation, you can go to 3D viewer just to make sure that you, it's looking pretty much as you'd expect. So if we go to the 3D viewer, um, now the first thing you notice is I have two red LEDs instead of a red, a green and a white. That's because for love and the money, I could not find a green LED. They had a red, they had a white in various sizes, three millimeter, millimeter five millimeters. So no green. Now, I, I just do not understand why there's not every single color under the sun of LEDs in the standard library. As a beginner, I don't think I should be forced into creating a brand new component called green LED. They're common enough. And blue and purple. I mean, I don't understand what I've done wrong. Once again, over to you guys. If you know that there's an easy way of doing it, you know, import another library or something, that'd be great. But once again, I was pushing this boulder up the hill and it just felt a little bit, hmm. But this 3D viewer is as good as um, the Easy EDA one. I'm going to make it just a little bit bigger, actually. There we are. Now, if you click and you can rotate, look. So it even knows. It's hard to make me laugh. The leads on the MOSFET are long like that. And they do stick through the board like that until you trim them. Both 3D viewers knew that and uh, it's quite funny. But yeah, as you can see there, you get a very, very good idea of how your board will end up. So both 3D viewers, both on KiCad and Easy EDA, they're, they're really worth looking at. Okay, um, yeah, so there we are. And I didn't, I didn't really uh, finish this board off, not to the state where I would want to send it off for manufacturer, because, well, one, it was the second time I was doing the same circuit diagram. B, it was all just a bit hard work. Now, that's possibly because I started on Easy EDA first. I got a, a handle on how that worked. Then I came to this, and of course it didn't work quite the same way. So I'm, I'm hitting these these mini road bumps, thinking, come on, why don't you do it the way the other one did it? Which is the wrong attitude, I know. But even when I put that to one side, it just seemed a little bit more difficult. That said, this product is supported by CERN, C-E-I-N, you know, from Switzerland with the old uh, Hadron Collider project. They're putting money into this. So obviously the big industry thinks this is a good product to use. So I'm definitely going to persevere with this so that I can get my head around some of the foibles of how to do things like creating new components or importing libraries or whatever it requires to do that. Because um, obviously it's, it's a well thought out project. product. Right, so basically the 3D viewer is great and definitely worth looking at. You can, I, when you get your PCB, whichever product you use here, it will look exactly like that 3D view. No surprises. It's all a bit of a letdown, really. You send it off, comes back, and you go, hang on, that looks vaguely familiar. Well, not just vaguely, it looks very familiar. And lo and behold, yes, it is that 3D viewer image that you end up with. On this particular board, KeyCAD, there's an excellent series of videos. It's from DigiKey. Uh, Sean, the chappy with the bow tie, does these. And... Uh, he whizzes through them at some rate. They are quite detailed, so you spend an awful long time on the circuit diagram and how to create a new footprint for a component um, and all things like that. But all that is important because you must get that circuit diagram really nailed down, as I said before, before you start on the PCB. So what I'll do is put some links at the bottom. I'll give you the links for episodes one and two of his videos, and uh, you can follow them on after that. But they are good, I must admit. And that's from uh, um, DigiKey. Okay, Sean, I'll give you those. And stick with him because he does, eventually he gets to like episode five and six of his videos. And that's when the sort of the meat is put onto this framework and you start designing your PCB and stuff. And all, all the previous lessons suddenly come into one. Um, there's no shortcuts on this. You really do have to sort of follow it step by step. And you can go back to those videos of his to find out all the nitty gritty of how to do things. In summary then, I found KeyCAD more work and I, I did find it a little bit like pushing that boulder up the hill. I'm going to persevere with it though because obviously it's a top-notch product 
and um, easy EDA I just found easier and more intuitive maybe though if I was to do a more complex board I might find that there are some limitations but for a beginner like me it was plain sailing and as you saw the board it, it came back no errors brilliant that's what I like to see okay so that sort of brings us more or less to the end of this video oh you want to see the end product of course don't you all built let's do that next and this is the final product as you can see it's some um, in a temporary case at the moment Arduino at the bottom shield on the top exactly as you saw in that video um, it all works if I if I bang it it goes to red and if I bang it again oh now that's generating that noise it's probably going to drive everybody nuts oh there we are so it all works um I am going to put this well I was going to put this I was going to put this into a box but actually I, I quite like this actually if I could replace this thing on top with something about a quarter of the size um, I'll be very tempted to leave it like this quite frankly so there we are okay so that's the PCB done All with easy EDA this time but next time I'm going to definitely try and use KiCad okay that's it thanks for watching and see you in the next video I hope you're finding these videos useful and interesting there are plenty more videos to choose and a couple are shown below and if you'd like to subscribe to this channel just click on my picture below and enjoy the rest of the videos thanks for watching